This meeting of the Gaston City Council will now come to order, and the chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris? Here. Councilman Williams is absent today. Councilman Avery? Here. Eccles? Here. Stewart? Here. Cannon? Here. Reed? Here. We have a quorum present. The meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Councilman Harris to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together to take care of this city's business. We ask that you be with all the officials here and all the citizens here and help us to understand that we are here to make those decisions that are best for the city of Gadsden and for all the citizens of Gadsden. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and let us forever never understand that you are our leader and we will continue to give you all the praise. Bless all our troops in harm's way. Bless the President of these United States. Give him wisdom and let him lead us in the direction that we should go. And we will continue to give you all the praise. These best and rest in Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. <coughs> second. Uh, the work session and council meeting held on October the second. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, motion carries to approve the minutes. Chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of the accounts for the week of September the 28th through the 4th, October the 4th. So moved. Second. second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor, well, he's not. Uh, could Miss uh, Detta Goodman come up, please? Is she here? Who? <laughs> say that again, man. Huh? Who you say? Data Goodman. Oh. Whereas October 12, 2012 has been designated as National I Love Yarn Day, dedicated to the affirmation of a deep passion for all things fiber related and to the millions of fiber artists who practice the crafts of knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, and tatting. Actually, in Alabama City, we learned a lot about that from taking it out of our hair. <laughs> Cotton meal. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Pearl McPee nailed it when she said, in the 19th century, knitting was prescribed to women as a cure for nervousness and hysteria. Many new knitters find this sort of hard to believe because until you get good at it, knitting seems to cause those ailments. Modern knitting matron Elizabeth Zimmerman declared property pra properly practiced knitting soothes a troubled spirit and doesn't hurt the untroubled spirit either. These statements are profound truths to knitters and crocheters everywhere. Just They just can't watch television without doing something else. They can't wait in line or sit at the doctor's office <clears throat> without fidgeting. They need to add a layer of interest in otherwise boring and all too quiet situation. A fiber artist never just sits and works on their project. A fiber artist works and thinks, works and listens, and most of all works and watches. Despite what we fiber artists know to be true, the non-fiber world somehow persists in thinking that a knitter or crocheter looks a certain way. Most likely, their grandmother, an elderly woman, quiet and polite, sitting in a rocking chair, surrounded by homemade goodies, and accompanied <clears throat> a house full of handmade and other lovingly created dust collections. In reality, the knitter today is just like, likely to be a young male, young or male. Several of today's best knitting designers are men, and a knitter is just likely to have body piercings, tattoos, as well as homemade cookies. The taming of the you is described to bring yarn and the fiber arts and sense of belonging to all those in the Gazan area who love the fiber arts and want to learn the crafts of knitting, crocheting, spinning, and tatting. Therefore, be it resolved, I, Sherman Gotten, Mayor of the City of Gazan, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, do present this pro proclamation in observance of I Love Yarn Knitting Day wishing you the very best to all in attendance and urging you to participate and enjoy the activities planned for this occasion. Thank you. Uh, 
the mayor lost me when he first started out. I, I thought he said young, and I was going to go to sleep. I said, you lost me when you first started, when you said young. I thought they were talking about, you know, <laughs> yawning. But then you caught my interest when you talk about all those folk with the tattoos and ear piercing that's a knitting. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. I, 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 that's why I don't knit. Unfinished business. Uh, <laughs> Mr. President, I have one, please, under unfinished business. I was not present at last week's council meeting due to sickness, and resolution number R284-12 was adopted which dis with a disapproval of an alcohol beverage license for Grub Mart 15 at 1101 West Megan Boulevard. Under the rules that I wasn't present last week, I would like to bring this back up today, please. I move to reconsider this resolution. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Uh, first, let me explain. Uh, if you're voting yes, then it would be to readopt the resolution. If you're voting no, it would be to not have the resolution anymore. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Those opposed? No. 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 The vote is unanimous to not uh, have the resolution adopted at this point. Okay, now, Mr. President, I would like to introduce a resolution approving the alcoholic, alcoholic beverage license for the grub mark. I would also ask for unanimous <coughs> consent to reconsider this resolution today. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, consent has been granted. <coughs> okay, now I move to adopt this resolution, please. Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. This was a uh, alcoholic beverage license for the Grub Mart, 1101 West Megan Boulevard, and we, the people that was here last week at the council me meeting, disapproved this on the uh, on the chief's approval or disapproval, and the chief has got back and gave us his approval on it now. So that's why I want to go ahead and bring this back up, save the business owners the time and also the money we would spend off in court on this. Chief, you want to tell us why you changed your mind? There were certain compliance regulations that we had no documentation of. Uh, those hindrances to the approval of this have now been taken away, so uh, I have no objection to it being approved. Any other discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt the resolution approving the issuance of the license. <coughs> Number nine is the time and place to advertise and conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisances or a property. Where did I get to? Located yeah. at 503 Ansley Street in District 2. Charles Lynn Amberson and wife Cheryl Lynn Amberson and Compass Bank being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of it? Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. We started this case in January of 2010. There have been no improvements. There are no permits to improve. And we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. else who would like to speak in favor of it? Chair Leonard had a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Number 10 is a public hearing. Is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 921 Spruce Street in District 5. State of Alabama, Kim F. Parker doing business as a Parker company, and trustee and Andrew M. Tofel being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who'd like to speak in favor of it? Mr. President, we started this case in May of 2011. 
there have been no improvements, there are no permits to improve. And we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of it? Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clark, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our final public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located at 2212 Norris Avenue in District 6. Tuska Cal, LLC and Mutual Savings Credit Union being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of it? Mr. President, we started this case in August of 2011. There was a permit taken out in November of last year. There have been no improvements to the property. We're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. Hmm. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of it? The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Mr. Well, President, may I ask uh, Brian? Uh, Give, can you give us an approximate time frame on those that we are, are voting uh, to abate today? We will order the services to be retired. When I say services, I mean the power, the gas, the water. Uh, once that's completed, that normally takes two to three weeks to complete. Once that's done, we'll do a uh, notice to proceed to public works. So realistically, four to six weeks, they'll be gone. Okay. Thank you, sir. So we're not behind? No. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Number, number 12 is a resolution authorizing an agreement with A1 Exterminating Company for classroom facility at the airport fire station. Hmm. This is for pretreatment of the building site for $500 and an annual renewal treatment of $105 a year for a five-year period ending September the 1st, 2017. Chairman, entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 13 is a resolution authorizing an agreement with James M. Barry Center for Children Incorporated. This is for community development funds in the amount of $4,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 14 is a resolution authorizing agreement with Snell Grove Civitan Center. This is for community development funds in the amount of $4,000. Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. New business, is there any new business? <coughs> Department reports, committee boards, are there any? Citizens request Miss Artie Martin Morgan to walk. She wants to <coughs> talk about the walk through as far as cemetery. <coughs> Please give your name and address for the city clerk. My name is Artie Morgan. 
minutes your remarks for five minutes, please, thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, the, my, the mic. Okay. <laughs> She's giving her address. Yeah, I was just giving her my address, okay. name and address. I'm Artie Morgan, okay. uh, and I'm representing the walk through time at Forest Cemetery. And visiting with me today is Minnie Lay Myers. And we want to invite you to take a few hours out of your busy, stressful lives to take, to s slow down a little bit and take a stroll through um, Forest Cemetery for a walk through time. This coming Sunday afternoon, October 14th from 2 to 5 p.m., come park your car at the old Gadsden High School and board a city trolley where you will be transported back in time to Forest Cemetery where you'll meet some of Gadsden's most memorable residents and hear their interesting stories. As you stroll from, gravesite to the, from one gravesite to the next, you'll see over 50 of our modern day residents clad in period dress uh, being the living voice for our characters. Many of our volunteers are actually descendants of those they're portraying. This is our fourth year to have a walk through time and one of our sponsors, Mr. Hugh Stump from the Tourism Board, tells us that we've earned the right to call ourselves an annual event. <laughs> we started with three goals in mind. One is to raise money to, for the ongoing preservation of our beautiful old cemetery to inform people uh, about the wonderful history and heritage that we have in our area, and also to give families something to do on a nice fall crisp afternoon. And I can say that we truly have achieved all our goals. Admission is free, but donations are encouraged, gladly accepted, and tax deductible. Mm -hmm. We'd like to thank the Mayor, Mayor Guyton for his support, his ongoing support and enthusiasm that he's provided uh, to a walk through time since we presented the idea to him about five years ago. And we'd also like to thank our wonderful patrons who've gone over and above everything that we've asked them for. They've been very generous. If you haven't been to a walk through time, we hope to see you this year. And if you have been, we encourage you to come again because you'll see something that you haven't seen before. And I thank you for allowing us to have this time and I'm open to any questions that you might have. Thank you, ma'am. Would the person in the period uh, costume <laughs> like to make a comment? <laughs> I'm, curious I'm Laura Elliott, 356 uh, Creek Haven Road, Rainbow City, Alabama. And you're going to be something for I me. am Minnie Lay Myers, and I will uh, fill you in on just a little bit of my story now. I'm the ghost of the Gadsden Library, and my father was a steamboat captain here in Gadsden. And I'll tell you the rest if you come out Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Here's a couple of brochures from last year's event. Um, the event is from 2 to 5 on Sunday. Uh, we've extended the time just a little bit so that you'll have a little more time to get around and see all the characters. But there will be new characters, so if you came last year, come back and see us again because I'll be new. I wasn't there last year, and you can see me this year. Uh, and there will be some different characters. So even if you've come before, it's a great opportunity to come out and and see us again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Remarks by the mayor to council. You want to start, mayor? <coughs> Put me off guard there. Uh, I just want to comment on a couple things. First of all, thank you, ladies. Uh, if anybody hasn't been out there, it's real neat to see famous people who have formerly lived in Gasden or worked here or did things that helped our city uh, with the impersonators. They have also some antique cars. One, one person has the antique car that a teacher drove. They're really, really good uh, impersonators. They uh, put on a good show. We have the uh, golf carts, we have trolleys, so they have, I think they have water. They have a lot of things to assist people, anybody who needs any kind of help. I did want to say something. Uh, there's been a few calls. It sort of worries me a little bit. I don't know if it's uh, uh, people calling people and getting them scared for no reason. But I want to comment on the fire stations, uh, about closing a fire station. It's been reported the city of Gadsden is closing fire stations because the fire department's overtime was reduced in the coming year's budget. While overtime is part of a big equation of a $46 million budget, it's only one piece of a very complicated puzzle. Many have chosen to retire. I think we've had 14 retire in the past few months because several people wanted the uh, option of a buyout to retire. 
and then I think we have four or five, six more that may be going to retire before the first of the year. We do have, the chief tells me about, uh, we had 25 that we're looking at on the list. Uh, I think they took the physical 15 pass, so we're in the process. It does take a couple of months to get them all on board. It's a, a training process as well before we actually put them to work. But anyway, there's several other tests they have to go through. So we've had to tempor temporarily close the stations, we can, but they can quickly be backed up by another nearby station within two to three minutes of a normal response time. No fire station would be permanently closed, and the closings are being rotated. The fire chief will make that determination on a daily, day-to-day -day basis. I'd like to say this. Uh, we have probably the best trained fire department in North Alabama. We have a lot of paramedics. We have the equipment. Uh, they have all the facilities we think that they need or that they tell us they need anyway. And, you know, uh, we, we will never do anything that's going to put public safety at risk, I assure you. Just like the police department, when I got in office, we had 80. We got about 100 now. And we got a couple of <coughs> sub-precincts that's going to be opening up. We would never do anything to put anybody at risk. Most of the calls go to about three stations. There's a couple that don't get many calls, but they're all placed pretty much strategically where they can be anywhere they need to be. Normally, if you see a 911 call, I was going down uh, Chestnut about a week or so ago, and the, an ambulance company was bringing a person out on a gurney. They weren't deceased or anything. I don't know what was wrong with them. But the ambulance company was there, the fire truck was there with three people, and the rescue unit, which is like our ambulance unit, was also there with two people. We will be covering the city, and any scare tactics you hear from anybody who wants to say otherwise is not true. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Billy? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to, I, I'm not going to go, at, go into anything at length, but I just want to assure our citizens, you know, that we're doing what we feel to be fiscally responsible for you, to you. In addition to that, we're not going to compromise the safety of any of our citizens in the city. But there are steps that must be taken, and I think uh, fiscally you would understand those if you knew all of the details. Um, the Barry Center, which you heard, uh, received money from <coughs> CDBG. The funding from there, I, I want to just say to me that is one of the most important organizations in this city because they handle child abuse cases and I just want to say that I am proud that we were able, they were able to receive more funds from CDBG and they will get the support of this council in this city uh, 100 percent. October is um, Breast, uh, breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, aware, awareness month. so I couldn't get that out. But I just want to remind everybody that it is, we are, uh, we are aware of it, and, uh, and do whatever you can to let's try to eradicate that terrible uh, disease. And I will be having, District 1 will be having a meeting Monday night, uh, October 15th, at 6 o'clock at East Gadsden Recreation Center. Everybody is welcome to come out to enjoy, I mean, to come out and uh, visit with us on that evening especially District 1 citizens, but we're open to anybody that wants to come and join us out there. Thank you. Um, I, I really wanted to follow up on what the mayor said about the fire department. We had a very, I think, good discussion upstairs, very good discussion, on the possibility of uh, seeing if we can bring some of those uh, firemen who have retired back as seasonal, seasonal employees until such times we can get back up to full strength. Um, we, we've done that with the police officers who now secure our building here. Uh, we've got uh, uh, retired police officers coming in to, to do that security. And I see no reason why we can't bring back some firemen on part-time basis or seasonal basis until such time we get back up to full strength. And I know the administration is looking into that. It's my understanding that they might have to take it before the Civil Service Board. And thus where the problem comes in. I, uh, that's a personnel problem. It seems like the city should be dealing with that as opposed to the Civil Service Board. But I'm going to leave that alone. That's another fight down the road that we need to fight about. Um, hopefully they'll concur with us. I understand they're meeting today. 
and this is of the utmost urgency. So hopefully someone can get with them today and, and get whatever approval, if they got to approve this, from them so we can move forward on that, that particular situation. Um, there's been a, a lot of deaths here lately, and I've uh, uh, missed uh, uh, giving my condolences to several families, uh, including mine. So I've just I had an aunt to pass several weeks ago, and just had another uh, cousin to, to pass this week. Um, but the Thomas family, uh, I, I didn't get a chance to, to give my condolences to the Thomas family. And then on the Hartnick's family, uh, Joey, 30 years old, had um, uh, a rare form of MS, and he was funeralized on yesterday. And I had to be over in Georgia with death in my family. I didn't get a chance to make it to that funeral either. And so I just wanted to express my condolences to those families. And again, our prayers and thoughts are with them. And hopefully, uh, you all will continue to pray for us as we go through another death in my family. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to uh, tell everyone that the, uh, you haven't been out to the walk through time. Uh, it's a really, really uh, interesting uh, afternoon. You get the, a lot of the history of uh, our city. It's just very entertaining. So I, I encourage everybody, if you haven't been out, you, you'll miss a, if you don't go, you'll miss a, a real entertaining afternoon and a very educational afternoon. You get a lot of history of our, our city. So I encourage you to go out this coming Sunday afternoon. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. President. I do want to kind of follow up on what Robert said. I was um, absent last week. Uh, we had two people, two city employees that retired, that passed away that I know of, that I worked with for years. One of them was Board Reddish. He was the age of 97. If I'm not mistaken, he's probably one of the, the last of the, the oldest living employee uh, retiree we had, I'm thinking he was. And also, too, it was Horace Crow. Horse Crow, Mr. Crow retired <coughs> probably a couple months ago. He took that bite and retired. And those guys will be truly missed at Public Works. I guarantee you they will. And they was good friends of mine. It was always there to help you if you ever need them. I'd go by and talk to Mr. Reddish all the time. And seen Horace everywhere I'd go, I'd see him. But they'll be greatly missed. And our prayers and thoughts go <coughs> with their family. And also I'd like to say that October the 25th, from 5 to 7, we'll have treats on Wall Street for the kids. We're expecting about 3,000 kids to come out this year. It's, this event's been going on probably for the last 35 years, and just to make sure everybody puts it on the calendar. It's October the 25th, Thursday night, from 5 to 7, and Alabama City, the Alabama City Merchants and City of Gaston sponsoring this. That's all I have. Man, good. Yes, I, I just <laughs> want to let the police officers know that how much I appreciate the increased police presence in District 7. And especially around Mitchell School, it, it's amazing, Mayor, that in the mornings how everybody fights on that four lane to get to the end where there's a two lane. Uh, but when that police officer comes up in that car and turns that flashing light on, it's amazing how many nose over and go 25 miles an hour. Uh, and in the in the neighborhoods, that's happening also. It's, it's making an impact in, in my district, I know, and I just want to let them know that I appreciate them, every one of them. Okay. If not anything else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Summer. Speed is adjourned.